Tonight on Joy News Prime, police detains one suspect in connection to the murder of Jirapa Dubai's owner, Eric Johnson. We're live in the area for details as the Upper West Regional Police Command launches full-scale investigation into the case. Also, Chairman of National Media Commission, Nia Wedu, describes as dysfunctional and unproductive recent calls by the Ghana Journalists Association for media houses to blacklist two politicians accused of aiding attacks on journalists. And later in the bulletin, NBC flag bearer John Dramani Mahama rejects the Electoral Commission's proposal for the 2024 general elections to be held on November 7. We're live on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 125. My name is Faustina Safo. Thanks for choosing us. We start from the Upper West region where the Ghana Police Service has arrested one person in connection with the murder of the owner of Safari Resorts in Jirapa in the Upper West region, commonly referred to as Jirapa Dubai. The arrest follows initial investigations by the Regional Crime Scene Management Team upon their visits to the crime scene. According to a statement from the police, Eric Johnson was found lying in a pool of blood at his private residence on Sunday. The Inspector General of Police has deployed a team of investigators and experts led by the Director General of the CRD to work with the Upper West Regional Police Command to ensure thorough investigation into the incident. On your screens now is a copy of that statement and it reads that the Ghana Police Service has commenced investigations into the circumstances surrounding the death of Mr. Eric Johnson the chief executive officer of Cozy Hills Hotel at Jirapa in the Upper West region. The disease was found on 11 February 2024, lying a pool of blood in one of the rooms at the hotel. The regional crime scene management team has visited the scene of the incident. One person has since been detained to assist the investigation. The Inspector General of Police has deployed a team of investigators and experts, led by the Director General, CID, to work with the Upper West Regional Police Command to ensure a thorough investigation into the incident. Just for clarity there, his body was found lying in a pool of blood at his private residence. Let's go on the phone lines now and speak to our Upper West Regional Correspondent, Rafik Salam, joining us right now via Zoom. You spent a greater part of your day at Jirapa. What information have you picked? Uh... The information that we have gleaned on indicated that the unknown assailant uh, might have come into the executive mansion, which happens to be the private residence uh, of Eric Johnson, uh, through uh, the back uh, on the way to a safari. Uh, he used and uh, is alleged to have used a ladder and then jumped into the fortified wall and then came into the executive uh, mansion. And then it all, we also had, it was it also indicated that the unknown assailant is, uh, is alleged to have a mastercard that could open the room of Eric Johnson. And so it was what he is alleged to have used and then entered the room. I uh, met him only wearing, suspected to have wearing only a towel because he suspected that Eric may have come from the bathroom. And so he used, uh, it's alleged that he used an uh, a sub implement uh, to stab him several times uh, on his abdomen, his chest, cheeks, and also with hands. And then after that, after alleged, uh, committing the act, he's alleged to have moved out of the executive mansion and also picked the car of Eric Johnson, went into the gate around 1 a.m., and then also honk, and then his security man came around to open him. The security man is alleged to have suspect. Uh, I to have said that he thought that was his boss, and that was why he opened. And so the, this unknown assailant took the car, went to the heart of uh, town, and left the car, the, the car uh, there. Mm. Now, from your snooping around, you also discovered something quite interesting, which I feel we should highlight. The fact that the CCTV cameras at his room at the time of the incident were off. Any clarity um, as to that? What happened? 
No, no, no. We, we, the information that we had was that where the unknown, this unknown assailant came from, and there was no CCTV camera around that area. Mm -hmm. That was what we, what, what, that was what the information that I had. And so mm -hmm. he used a ladder and jumped into the residence. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, he went into the, you know, uh, he went into his room. And so we are not sure whether the CCTV cameras were working or were not working. I haven't had gotten that information yet. Mm -hmm. What I know is that where this unknown assailant came from, there was no CCTV camera from that particular side. And even, even when he entered the executive mansion, coming out, there was no way that he could have gotten out without a ladder. And so the only route was to use a main gate and use Eric's personal car. A car that many people know him of is not the one. The other one is a Land Cruiser, which is gone for service, and that I'm told. But he used another car, which is a Honda, and that is the car that he used. And then the, his security man thought that that was his boss coming out, and he opened for him. The information that we also had indi also indicated that um, Eric sometimes and some of his uh, deputies sometimes go around in the night, you know, on a patrol. And so, but it's really long that he has done that. So this security man uh, is alleged to have thought that he was going on that round, and that was why he opened him. And so the site at the Cozy Hills Hotel um, is one that looks like a ghost town. Uh, no many people are there. Uh, we tried to speak to uh, some of the workers there. They were tired late about the information. They were telling us that, that they haven't heard about anything that uh, happened at the hotel. Uh, and so the alleged act didn't happen at the hotel. It's not the hotel that it's mm. It happens at a private residence of Eric Johnson, which is known as the executive mansion. Mm. Now, you have been doing some snooping around. Do you know the, the identity of this one person that the police tells us they have arrested? Also, what's happening now to the body of Eric? Um, the identity of the person that the police said that they have arrested is still not known. We are still digging uh, to know who is that person that they have arrested. Uh, but I can also tell you that uh, the body of uh, Eric has now been uh, moved to the Apple Hospital, Hospital uh, Mock, uh, where he's been uh, deposited there and uh, for further uh, investigation. So I saw uh, some family members uh, from uh, Giraffe and also Limayri of Bori. Uh, who were there, and then also to ensure that the body was there for safekeeping, so that mm. the police could continue with their investigations. Thank you so much. Rafik Salam is our Upper West Regional Correspondent, giving us updates on that incident. Now, let's move on to other stories. The chairman of the National Media Commission, Yao Buidu, has described as dysfunctional and unproductive recent calls by the Ghana Journalists Association for media houses to blacklist two politicians accused of aiding attacks on journalists. The GJA declared a blackout on MP for Wutu Senya East, Mavid Sawakumsin, and MP for Yindi Farouk Aliu Mahama, both accused of assaulting journalists from KPFM and CTFM in the heat of the NPP parliamentary primaries. The NMC chair, while condemning assaults on journalists, asked that victims explore legal avenues to fighting such acts of impunity against journalists. To the recent puri, vicious, and violent attacks on journalists for exercising their primary obligation of informing our people, this has resulted in the equally unilateral decision of the GJA in calling for a boycott or blackout on such people. Why is the approach is popular, it is dysfunctional. Many years ago, I, I courted displeasure and contempt when the Ashanti region chapter of the GJ issued such an order against the Vice Chancellor of KNUSC, Professor Ellis Otu. As is issued with some of our journalists, my dissent was taken as being too known. I was taken to the cleaners and described in very pejorative ways as a term coat, infinimo, treacherous, traitor against journalistic interest. I still hold the position that whilst it is disheartening for journalists to be attacked violently, the unilateral resolve to black out or boycott is not the most productive reaction. We cannot fight impunity with impunity. 
I will support any effort to ensure that justice is done against all such deviant acts rather than blackout or blackout. We must follow the, due, the rule of law and the due process. Condemning such acts is in order, but not the blackout or blackout. DJ President Albert Dumfo is, however, shocked and disappointed in the comments of the NMC chair. He described the posture of the NMC as unfortunate because the DJ exhausted all relevant processes before issuing its directive. What has the NMC done to promote and ensure independence of the media and the freedom of the media in this country? You abandon your call for your constitutional mandate and a journalist a journalist, a veteran journalist for that matter, who's part of us, because today you are heading a state institution or a state organization which we think which is supposed to be independent, will now disagree with a tall media body. We have 500 bodies that came together to take this decision. So if you disagree with even GJ, you disagree with, are you saying you also disagree with Media Foundation, disagree with Giba, disagree with Print Park? It is genuine, I don't be an idiot. We don't even know what we are doing. And it's unfortunate that this comment is it is the responsibility of the NMC to provide a neighboring working environment for journalists to thrive. After that, not, we see NMC sanctioning journalists, media houses, going to apologize, going to do this. One at all as the NMC sanction perpetrators of attack on journalists. He will tell you that all this report didn't come before them. He will say that all this report didn't come before them. Meanwhile, during the invasion of the UTV studio, nobody reported to them. They were the first people to issue the statement. But nobody reported to them. When politicians, government officials attack journalists, you sit down there and say you are waiting for a report to act as NMC, which is supposed to protect journalists. So if you can't protect journalists and you cannot ensure uh, you cannot ensure a safety in the environment for journalists. Why would we disagree if we are taking abnormal decisions? Let's do some politics now. President Kufado has described as unfortunate comments by former President John Dramani Mahama questioning the authenticity of the recent West Africa Senior School Certificate Examination results. According to him, some invigilators relax on the job as teachers aid students in answering questions. This comes after the Education Minister, Dr. Yao Seiduchum, announced that this year's result was the best since 2015. Well, listen to the President shortly. First, let's bring back the sound of John Dramani Mahama. What your exams are, in many places, when checking Padano, they let the children cheat freely. You go to places and the teachers are conniving with the children to cheat. The effect of this will be seen later. Because you certify these children, you say he's of this standard, either basic BEC or SSC, and that child will use that certificate, go abroad to a school, and they'll find that in Ghana your qualification is not up to what you say it is. It is, it is going to affect this nation. The thing we're just doing it, anytime the results come, you say, oh, the children have performed better than they ever performed before. You know, and we all know what is happening in the system. But addressing the 187 speech and prize given day at Wesley Girls High School in Cape Coast, the president says that the criticism of John Dramani Mahama lacks merit. It is a pity, though, that the sad nature of aspects of contemporary Ghanaian politics drove some otherwise allegedly responsible people including a former president and perennial presidential candidate to question the integrity of the results happily without any foundation and attribute these results to cheating. Students of Wesley Girls High School, Wegehe Girls, do you cheat in examinations? I'm sure this loud no will send a strong message to those who express this unfortunate, misguided sentiment. Ladies and gentlemen, 
government intends to continue to deepen the education of our population so as to attain our industrialization objective. This means that there will be increasing emphasis on science and technology education and technical and vocational training. The Accra STEM Academy, a school dedicated principally to the teaching and learning of science, technology, engineering and mathematics STEM, is almost complete and will be commissioned this year. The development of 20 STEM centers and 10 model STEM senior high schools across the country are at various stages of completion. Some of these schools have been operationalized and have been fitted with state-of-the-art equipment and laboratories to facilitate teaching and learning in all areas of study, including artificial intelligence and robotics. We intend to put STEM education in its central relevant place in our educational structure. And I have no doubt that alumina of Wesley girls will distinguish themselves in the fields of artificial intelligence and robotics. And in so doing, we will not neglect the critical contribution of the humanities in the growth of our society and civilization. Indeed, it is being increasingly accepted that the best balance is not just STEM education, but actually STEAM, i.e. STEM plus the arts. John Dramani Mahama has also been encouraging Ghanaian youth to have lost interest in voting in the upcoming elections to rescind their decision. According to him, election presents them the opportunity to drop governments that have failed in their mandate. He was addressing students of selected tertiary institutions in the northern region. We have elections this year. I meet a lot of young people and they tell me we are not going to vote. Of course, I know a lot of them are disappointed because they voted for some people who deceived them and raised their expectations so high. And so because of that, they say we are not going to vote because we are tired of voting, we don't see any difference. And I want to say to those people that you must punish those who disappointed you. Those who raised your expectation and said that they were going to turn Ghana into a paradise within a certain specified time frame and have disappointed you, you must punish them so that tomorrow somebody will come and do the same thing. And so, let's take an interest in the democratic process. We stay on politics. John Romani Mahama has also proposed that the December 7th election should remain as it is. It should not be held on November 7th as the EC is proposing. Since the defeat, there's already indication that this government has begun, begun scheming to undermine the credibility of the elections. We cannot fail to notice the sudden interest and the push by the Electoral Commission to shift the date of the elections from December 7th to November 7th, at a time when it has not demonstrated its readiness to conduct even the general election. The lack of preparedness was clearly manifest in the district assembly elections held in December last year. Elementary lapses and shocking logistical shortfalls painted a picture of a commission which is simply not able to undertake the elementary tasks of managing an election. One would have thought that the commission would spend its time to put its house in order and hold itself in full readiness for the assignment ahead rather than proposing bizarre changes to the voting calendar. Over a month into the election year, Something as basic as a calendar of activities for the year has not yet been prepared by the Electoral Commission. About 10,000 victims of the spillage of the Akosomo Dam in the North Tong constituency are still living in tents and other makeshift structures five months after the devastating flooding. This is according to Member of Parliament for the area, Samuel Kujeswa Blakwa, 
who has facilitated the construction of two alternative housing schemes to house up to 600 people, but says a lot more help is required. Former President John Romani Mahama, who is back in the parliamentary probe into the spillage, says government has been insensitive to the plight of the victims. The Kwasante has the rest of the story from effect. It's been five months since the floodgates of the Akosumbo Dam was opened, leaving in its wake devastation never seen in decades. So many people reduced to living in tents with their entire livelihoods wiped off. With the water now receded and the people trying to build back their lives, so much help is still needed. For now, the focus of MP for Nofton, one of the worst affected constituencies, Samuel Okujitua Blackwa and his partners, is to relocate as many of the victims as possible and resettle them in decent accommodations. The MP has now opened the second alternative housing project to house at least 300 families. We have been able to mobilize those resources and put together this second housing project which we are calling the North Thorn MP and Partners Safe Alternative Housing Initiative. From tonight, 300 people who are living in refugee-like tents in Dagome, in Agbetiko, in Aveime, in Dofwadidome, in Fojoku, from tonight, they can have access to decent modern accommodation and they can have their dignity restored. The MP says it is unacceptable that government is failing to live up to its responsibilities. We head now to the Asawasi constituency where some youth in the area are advocating for the completion of three AstroTech projects initiated by, initiated by the present government. According to them, the government had assured the construction of these astrotefs with the aim of nurturing local talents. Unfortunately, their aspirations have been crushed as the construction has come to a halt, causing the once vibrant football culture to fade away. Join News is Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin Hasmo in the following report. We have about three pitches in Aswansi which have been abandoned, Highlanders, Abu School Park, and that one we are standing behind us as I'm speaking now. Our wish and dream is to have these parks being built so that we can have more players in our community because Aswansi have produced a lot of players. Some of the players that we have produced are like somebody like Dogomoro, we have Ishak Debra, Adma Jerry, and even as I'm speaking now, we have some of the young players like Frank and Champo, a black star player. The astro the sword, uh, the sword has been cut. So we know when the sword is cut from a government project, it needs to be completed. But per the documentation, as we heard, that everything is complete. But looking at the surrounding, nothing shows. We know government control how it goes, we have faces of it. Okay, but the documentation they say is complete, but we don't know. Uh, the place has been like this, and the youth don't have to place to train, so they usually play the uh, football. So, as you can see, some of the nets have all, all torn down due to, I mean, one or two things. So, it's a big deal to the uh, country again, which we have to renovate again. So, so why is it a constituency rich in talent and dreams? But hidden beneath the shadows of neglect lies a symbol of broken promises and unfulfilled potential. So we feel very discriminated in a situation whereby this is started before others, the likes of the Chamsu, Bantama and others. They've seen this way after this has been started, but still this has been completed and it's even been patronized. And we are the same set people that are using those facilities. Uh, so we have uh, our elders who went to the uh, municipal to inquire. They, they came with a feedback that the pitch has been done since it completed. That that is what they told us. That is what our elders told us that there is no there is nothing to be done again because the pitch has been done already. So we have made some feedbacks. We did some demonstrations. Let me say two three times, and yet uh, nothing seems to be happening. So we don't know what to do again. That's why we are pleading to the right authorities to take charge. The astro tests, which were expected to be the heartbeat of the community, now echo the silence of neglect. How? 
first one, ya di kaya Islanders, ena ya Jane sa, si si koshe Islanders, ya bua bua abu boni ina ena ako one side, ena amount for bua bua one side. Si si i di kura ya ya nu wohono, ukwa ubenu se adena ya basa, adeti na ya wose ya basa because of zongo. Zongo, you know, in Penufo, in Penufo, I was Zongo, no, or moon, or like, that's the kitchen Zongo, or moon, ne, Akuma, and Mazongo, or moon, Akuma, and Mazongo. Yasai Allendes, she also the same thing. I didn't know what I was saying, but I'm going yes, Remo, yes, Remo, we need him. Moon saw the engine hour, no more Mazongo, and Drew Baby, and Maya, Nay, she also know Yansu Yabumudi, Nay, I can't say why I depart. And my always, and my. I say, ye be a noir, may ye did more time, and I say, ye can't send from a tremu, eh, ya, I say, eh, aye, eh, haye. Started by the MPP government, the Astro Tefs were hailed as a game changer for the Aswasi's footballing community. But as the years passed, the promises faded and the fields fell into disrepair. Since the beginning of this administration, I mean the current MPP government, which I'm part, no any project that have been started concerning training facilities, they are able to finish it. Because and even, even before the commencement, commencement of this project, you know definitely this is what is going to happen. Because when you go to our cream, our cream school, which is near, 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 near to here, they have started one. The, the complaint is the same thing. The complaint is the same thing. No fun, no fun, no fun. So we are pleading on the better authorities to help us construct this pass for us so that we can get more and enough talent in our community. Because as I was saying now, um, football, helps our community a lot. There is a growing discontent among the youth as they grapple with the consequences of the abandoned projects. As the people of Asawasi continue to wait for action, the fate of the abandoned astrotests remains uncertain. Will they ever fulfill their promise of nurturing local talent and providing opportunities for the community or will they remain as reminders of unfulfilled dreams? That's it for John News Prime. My name is Faustina Safa. For more news, please log on to myjohnline.com. Have a pleasant evening as you enjoy the rest of our programs.